I'll tell you, it's really been a, 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 the last couple of weeks. I've, I've been teaching on Sunday mornings on the flesh. Y'all enjoyed that? You know, sometimes we, we just walk around on earth like this is just the way it is, when it's not. It's the way we make it. It's the way we perceive it. You know, as a pastor, I can look out at people and I can see, Lord, am I not doing a very good job? And why don't people want to come on Wednesday night? Why don't they want to come on Sunday? What's all the... He said, James, they're preoccupied with their flesh. Look, guys, they have a hundred things. This. I want to be in his presence. I want to know. You can go out in that world, and I guarantee you, you're not going to run into people teaching you something about God. They'll hustle you. They'll manipulate you. They'll try to con you. They'll try to rip you off. They'll try to talk nasty to ugly and vile. They don't give a rip about nothing but themselves. You come to church, you start identifying with something bigger than you. You start realizing the God who created you is living inside you, and there's some other challenges that are stopping you from walking in his will, something to stop you. We saw that the flesh has an issue with that. <clears throat> well, on Wednesday night, I'm teaching about mindset. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. It's not, I didn't give you that to you, but write it down because that's going to be our preamble on this course. Because we've got to understand, this is so important that we don't miss it. You're a spirit, you live in a body, and you've got a mind, will, and emotions. And every one of us have got to challenge these other ones I for. And then you could go, wow, thank you, Lord. Then you walk out of here in your mind and say, you don't believe that, do you? Well, I don't. I, man, who do you, you know, you don't, you ain't going to never measure up to Jesus. You ain't never going to. And your mind will try to talk you out of what God said. You ever had that happen? Your flesh will say, oh, listen, man, I, got, I can't go to church. Not, even though he said, come to church, get known with all, pray the prayer of faith to heal the sick. Well, I don't know, but I just can't. I don't feel good enough. Man. So we will be complacent. We will back off from making ourselves available to what God said is ours. God wants to transform us. He said here in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, he said, for though we, that's you and me, walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now, what would be warring against your flesh? Your flesh is telling you to do something. Your mind is telling you to do something, but your heart is telling you to do something. And the one that wins the war is the one you serve. I don't put nobody going to tell me what I have to do and what I need to do and what I want to do. Well, then go ahead and listen to yourself. The most dangerous thing in our life is the unholy trinity. That's me, myself, and I. I know me, and I know myself what I would do in any circumstance. And I will do what's always best for me. And that lock, I agree with myself, and I do what myself wanted to do, and say, thank you, Jesus. He said, I ain't turned a word to you. You still had to listen to what I said. He said, for though you walk in the flesh, you do not war against the flesh, for the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Carnal means sensual. Carnal means walking of us. We wouldn't feel Our body would fall form, and we'd walk in there and there's something wrong with us. Let's avail ourselves to that information. Feel like it. Well, why do your feelings got anything to do about it? He said to just live by feelings, didn't he? No, he said they live by faith. You live by faith. You walk by faith. You talk by faith. You act by faith. There's things that you do in faith that your body will go, what are you doing? I just went and did a funeral over here with people. I never knew them, never met them in my life. I went in and brought them out of horror, crying, messed up, and they're laughing and feeling very good about it. Why? Because I know who I am, and I know what I represent, and I know what I take to someone. It's calculated. I know what I'm doing. You go in there and be like, who are you? Do you, do you all call? Listen. You go straight down and get free. And you walk in the person God says you are, then you don't have to feel like you are. You are. And then all of a sudden, when you are, you are. And then you find the critics is on the other side of the fence because they don't like to be free. They like being slaves. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Everybody say strongholds. Did he say pulling them down? 
God's weapons are going to pull down your mindset. What you think in your mind isn't always true. Well, the doctor, I don't care what the doctor said. Well, my bank account, I don't care what your bank account said. Well, my kid, I don't care what your family says. I care what God says. It's a development of faith when you take that measure that God gave you and you start pronouncing things as though they weren't. I was a tell Did you see? That ain't me. I don't know him. Uh, all the other knew that guy and he met this guy and I, he said how do you live through all that God's good praise I, I got saved stuck God didn't make a mistake when he chose me God didn't throw the baby out with the bath water can I get an amen thank God he took me out of that ditch and carried me up to his throne and said sit down son I'm a dog God I'm worthless I'm Sit down, son, and one great thing I want you to do, shut up. Quit who you are. Thinking stinks. If I called you blessed, you are. If I called you healed, you are. If I called you delivered, you are. If I called you holy, you are. See, your voices are so small when I say that. You know the activation it's the elevation in your life. What you open out of your mouth, you're going past your fear zone. Your flesh goes, wait a minute. Who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? God says, talk back to it. I'm elevating. I'm starting to say this in the Bible is who I am. I refuse circumstances. I refuse. Paul said, oh, I'm persuaded neither life nor death, no principalities, no powers, no wits, no breaths, no heights can separate me from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus. There's a place where Jesus Christ says, look, I want you to come to church so you can get around my word, get around my spirit, and then accept and embrace who you really are and not based on what some man says. I don't give you your identity. Jesus does. He's the author and finisher of you and me. So I don't say you'll ever be me, but I'll never be you either. Say amen. I like that. He said, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, you see, these are the weapons that form against you. They begin in your imagination. Everybody close your eyes real quick. Imagine Baskin Robbins. Keep your eyes closed. Two dips of the deep, dark chocolate ice cream on a cone, a sugar cone. How many of you saw it? Huh? How many of you saw the Baskin Robbins? Saw the outside? Yeah, see? Why? Your imagination will take a thought that somebody gives you, and it will run it into its mindset. It'll start imagining. Imagining means it starts bringing together a mental picture. You start to beep, beep, and they start pitching things inside your head. You try to go trust someone for a new relationship. You could try to go start doing something uh, different than you did before. And those things come from Satan out of your past and put them inside, drop them into your brain, and all of a sudden make you start thinking about them. Well, then when you start imagining it, it starts creating pictures. That one picture creates another picture. Now it's dropped down. I've heard many of them say, I got to run home from work because I think my old lady's smacking up with some guy. I just know it. And they lose their job because they keep running home to check on her and she ain't doing nothing. But because in his brain he had a bad relationship of old and he keeps on seeing his new relationship through that one and those pictures keep getting him to imagine something. I had a guy come out to church and he took, they were about to get in a fight out in front of the sanctuary when I was in this big church. And the, and the ushers come up and say, Matt, I think those guys are fixing to drink some violence out there. I mean, you better go check it out. I went outside and said, what's going on here? He said, none of your business. Get out of here. I said, excuse me? I'm ahead of mood here. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the elders in the church. You ain't doing nothing out here unless I don't know what's going on. So he told me. He said, this man right here, 
He had an affair with my wife. He was her boss down at the job place, and he took her home at lunch, and he had sex with her. I said, okay. Did you just? Yes. I tried to tell him I'm sorry. I tried to tell him. He said, no, he's over here at this church because it's across the street where I live, and he wants, to, he wants to get up in my face. He wants to see my wife. That's what he's after. See, his emotions were locked up in pictures. And I said, okay, look, you go on inside the service. I heard him tell him you were sorry. He said he asked you to forgive him. Then you go back inside the service. Listen, that guy was right. That was probably what he was there for. I, I ain't disputing that. I'm disputing what he's trying to create a mental picture that I've got to dissolve and I've got to make it go away. When that guy went in there, I took him in the back room. I said, I started talking to him. I said, sir, you know what he did. Your wife told you. She owned it up. She confessed it. She was sorry, crying what she did. Okay. Did you forgive her? Yeah, but I tell you, I said, no, stop. Sir, it takes three to have an affair. Why did your wife have to find somebody else? Why did you fail her? Oh, so you're blaming it on me? Yes, sir, I sure am. Uh, she must love you. She came right home after the deed and confessed it to you. But you've got this imagination running wild on what you want to know. I said, what do you want to know? Let's be honest. What do you want to know? Do you want to say how he took her clothes off? How he kissed all over? How he did things to her? Yes! Yes! That's what I wanted. And he pulled out this big old pig sticker and said, I was going to cut his throat. Ooh, let's lay that down. Give me that. He was a big old thing. I said, brother, you're full of sin and you need to repent. Ask God to forgive you right now and get delivered from this or you will do something that you will regret for the rest of your life. The man broke down, cried, forgave the man, forgave his wife. They went to counseling. They stayed married and had a couple more kids together. But the emotions is what I'm talking about. Casting down imagination. How many times have you thought some condition in your life and you got more fear and more fret and more worry that it was going to happen and it never did? Because why? You gave place to that thought. Jesus said, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you exalt something over something, that means you give a preeminence to it. God, I know you said you love me, but I don't feel it over here. But God, you said you're going to bless me, but my bank account don't say it. You've made those thoughts of yours higher than God's word. And you wonder why God can't talk to you? Because you won't cast down your thought of God. God's really a bad God. He is, can't be all that good because he doesn't do this for me. And, he doesn't, and you're still full of your own self. And the minute you adjust and make the adjustment and cast down those thoughts and lift up the thoughts, God, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. God, you're the glory and the lifter of my head. You don't hate me. You're not trying to kill me. You're not trying to hurt me. God, you're not the bad guy. Forgive me for ever thinking you were the bad guy. You've got to grab a hold of your thoughts. He said, cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought. I'm going to say, thought. Slip this one. Just like a computer. And all of a sudden, time, he'll pull that that'll have the right emotional here and all white that thought that you're just like oh god I lose my life I lose my business I lose everything and God said all that could have been avoided if you'd have cast that thought down catch it if it's producing fear it's not God it's producing faith it's God you gotta tell faith have your way so I'm going to cast down thoughts that are not productive to my growth and health and well-being. Got to, folks. Not a choice. You're not less than because you cast your cares upon Jesus. I've had people tell me, I'm not going to go bother Jesus with all the problems of my life. Dear God, get away from me. I don't want your cooties. You think I can fix you? I can't. I've been trying to fix people for 30 years, and a lot of them are still broke. Well, he wasn't a good counselor. Well, she wasn't a good wife. Well, that wasn't a good boss. Well, this is that. Bad parents. Everything. Sir, die. You're never going to become what God said you are because you can't get you out of the way. He said, 
Those things exalt themselves against the God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Obedience to Christ is if he gives you a command. Would you obey him? Would you bring it? Then, then stop and died and rose up for you. Do you not understand how much more will I do for you? There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. But why won't you trust me? Well, because I got these thoughts out of my childhood. I got these thoughts and I'm just... No, you're full of sin. You will not trust the God who saved you. You can be saved and still look like hell. And if you try to fix somebody with a mental, trying to go and ream it out, you're wasting your time. If they can't trust Jesus, why do you think they're going to ever trust you? That's what God's trying to get us to. He wants us to understand that there are mindsets that we've developed over many years. Colossians 3.1. He said, If then you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Did he say that? Look, because the devil torments you and this and that. Faith was you to stand. Do one thing to etiquette. I am. I am. I'm going to be more. Thoughtful and provoking that, deteriorating myself because of what I see I don't like. If you don't like something about yourself, change it. You look in a mirror, you see what person you are. You know what? I don't like that image. I didn't go back and tell my wife, let's move. I don't want to be in a house with a mirror in the bathroom. I don't like what I see. So I don't want no mirrors there. But I can see my wife going there and look in that mirror, go in there one woman, and come out a completely different one. Why? She didn't like what she saw. And she was bold enough and smart enough to pick up that cosmetic stuff and go, <laughs> and come out, <laughs> wow, boy, transformation. Well, that's the same thing we do in our spirit. You look in the mirror and you see what you are in the natural. God says, look in my word, you'll see what you are in the spirit. But don't go look in the mirror of the Word and go, well, God, look at me. I don't look like that. I don't act like that. I don't talk like that. And God said, and you never will at that rate. I didn't ask you for your opinion. I asked you to believe me, to take me at my word, to do what I say. And all of a sudden, things start changing in you. You don't have to go to church. You want to go to church. You don't have to give. You want to give. You don't have to pray. You want to pray. Pretty soon, you're a very happy person being in the presence of God all the time. I want the Word around me all the time. I want praise around me all the time. I want that on things above. Sit there for a minute and take it back off. That's what carnal reasoning does. Well, that was good. You got a buzz. You feel good. <clears throat> ah, you started to, got you a line of that Holy Ghost. Whoo, ah, I feel good. But it won't last to Wednesday. Won't even last an hour after you get out of church to get in a fight with your wife or husband. It's gone. Where'd the glory go? You let your mind change directions. And God says, we're going to work on that, okay? He said, keep your mind set on what God said, not on how you feel. Feelings. All I got is feelings. But brother, you just don't know how I feel. You've never gone through what I... I grabbed a picture of Jesus on that cross, and I said... You ever seen that? Did you ever feel the ouch? When he's crammed on his head, he didn't care about what he felt. He cared about you and me. God wants us to know we'll never care about someone else more than we care about the reason we care about them. That's because of Jesus. He wants us to do that. See? Fasting, losing weight, exercising, cleaning a closet or basement. These are something you have to set your mind to do to do it. It won't get done just because you said, oh, I'd really like to see that done. You do it. Well, the Word of God is the same thing. It says, this is what you are. Why don't you go do it? Why don't you go do it? Why don't you go do it? Hebrews 12, 11.
Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. Afterward, it is that when you get corrected, it immediately wants to attack your flesh. Well, I, I, I still did it. I'm just, you did not what you wanted done. I still got it done. And you're still in rebellion arguing with your boss. Your boss said, change it. This is the way I want it done. Do you know that when a person is an overseer or something, the way they want it, they want it to be known, they want it to be seen. And guess what? Everyone that's a part of it is not their At uh, Baskin, look at a uh, diner that you go to. Sets a something that they want to get it on hamburger joint. Or you to remember when you go down, someday go to that place. Well, if we would learn that Christ come to us to experience Him, man, I, that, I was healed. My, my, got up, everything went away. Man, I don't understand that stuff, but boy, it sure feels good. I was really sick. Those happen tens of thousands of times every day somewhere in America, somewhere in the world. We don't ever hear about it. But because God wrote it and he said it, somebody's picking it up and they're running with it and it's happening. Amen. Number one. For as much then as Christ is in the flesh, and for he that is from sin, finds that God said, being exposed to what that now I have he paid that can I forgive there's nothing in this box that man is no longer there don't come out here and talk to it he's not there but I'll tell you what needs to be there all your hate, all your bitterness, all your unforgiveness, all your jellies, all envy, all your pride, all those things that have kept you apart from really understanding who you are in God. Place them in here. I said the, most of the times at funerals, the only time you see loved ones. You haven't seen family or kin, nothing for 20 years. No, I'm, I, I, you know, I said, that's wrong. Why don't you not just enjoy these people around you today, but why don't you call them next week and go to lunch with them? Why don't you build a relationship again? Why don't you establish yourself? Because you know one day they might not be here either. We're so busy living that we forget to live the way Christ wanted us to. There's a life that God wants us to have. And God says, I will help you do. If I can help you, won't fail or failure. How many of you made decisions and then it's totally wrong? Take somebody's head off. Coming to hug me, and I slapped him. God, why did I do that? He said, I got you. Oh, and I want you to be blessed. Everybody say, Adam. The former convert corrupt according to your mind. Created in righteousness. And there's a person that you and I put on the mind of Christ. And ask if you felt like, well, you show it to me, and I'll believe. And God will show it to you. He will not give you something because you've got to trust him and say, thank you right now, it's mine. I don't lie. What the heck do you think you that? What God said I am? Then think about it. The stronghold that try to come to towards self-control and is your friend. Crisis would give you character. Things can happen to me happen. Because you said you'd never leave me it's in calamity than he is. There's a place where we've got a carnal person. That man over there will get you. That's what God wants. We're his vessels. We are his temple. And he wants to work through us. But he's got to get us to be delivered from ourselves and what we think of ourselves and what we've experienced in life. And those things that are becoming saturated issues that we never get rid of. I had my sister tell me some stuff about her life that happened 25 years ago. And I'm going, why are you still hanging out that camp? That's been so far removed and gone. Why, you're going back in the annals of the flesh to bring that junk out. See, somewhere we got to stop consulting the flesh and start consulting God. Saying, Lord, I don't need this anymore. I don't care what people think of me. I do care what you think of me. And I'm going to walk in your life. See, disciplines will cause self-control 
to grow you up to where you can be wise. You be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. You be able to understand and recognize something, the wiles of the devil, the schemes and plots. You'll bust them. I'm learning right now, if a person's got a demon or they got a problem and they will not give it to God, you can't make them. Bye, see you later. I'll be wasting energy, and the devil knows that if I control someone and they're so full of self that they won't let go of self, they're going to say, self is a God. I love me, myself, and I. Well, then go be with you, yourself, and I. Bye, I ain't got time for you. You don't love me. You don't get people to always kick me out. That's because you won't change. You will not let yourself be humbled. You will not accept that you need God. Every person in hell thinks God screwed them. Everybody. That everybody. Oh, please send somebody back to my brothers so they don't have to come here. He said he got the law and the prophets. They won't believe them. They wouldn't believe somebody coming back from the dead. I've seen miracles. 20 years from now, I could tell you stories of miracles I saw. People say, well, I don't see them around here in the church. I don't see none of that. People will doubt what's in your memory. But God said what's in your memory is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. It can't be what our memories fail us that we didn't do the things God told us to do. I stir myself up. I've seen miracle signs and wonders. I've walked in them, and I walk in them every day. I had a woman at that funeral, I mean, at that conference I went to, and she walked up to me, a short little black lady, and she goes, you remember me? And I was leaving. I said, no. I used to go to the church here all over there. I had brain cancer, and I was going under the knife. They were going to cut me open and take and remove that tumor and do chemo and all that stuff. You prayed over me. You prophesied over me that I would live and not die and declare the works of God to my generation. The devil's a liar, and that you're going to come out of this fire. That was 17 years ago. She told me, I wrote a book, and I'm ministering to people everywhere about God's healing power. Praise the Lord. I didn't get her name. I didn't get her autograph. I said, praise the Lord. See you later. Can't even remember. All I can remember is a little late. I probably saw her in public. I wouldn't remember her again. Why? Because that's not important to me. It's important to her that God spoke to her through somebody. And she got God's result. To who gets the glory? God does. Let's so I want to put it in the newspaper, get me a big old stage and get everybody going. I look at what God can do through me. Y'all need to come get God from me. I say, no, you need to get God whether I'm in the picture or not. You must be someone who's realizing the truth. We got kids walking around here. Y'all need to go check them out. See, wisdom will exalt you. The Bible said, when you get wisdom, get understanding also. See, when you understand something and then you apply it, then it becomes wisdom. So knowledge applied becomes wisdom. You're applicating what God gave you in Revelation and you produced it. Now it's wise. Now you understand how it works. You can tell something about the miracles, telling people about stuff all day long, but until they experience it by faith, till they say, I see what you said, now let me do what you said. I'd be scared. I'd be scared. If I told you right now, you got that tongue, get up. You got that interpretation, get up and give it right now. God told me to tell you that. She'd be going, ee! I'd be scared, I'd be scared. And the flesh would be going, dig 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 and, and the spirit would go, maybe. Get up and try it. He's manipulating me. No. You got up in the spirit and you said, okay, here I am naked before you, God. I'd be scared. Somebody asked me, how do you know when it's the spirit working on your life? You'd be scared. <laughs> your flesh ain't doing it. It's the spirit of God doing it through you. And when you surrender to that, your fear is laid aside and the faith of the Son of God walks through you and God's thing happens. And you go, wow, that person can speak in tongues and they have an interpretation. Wow, they're prophesying. Wow. Wow. All it is is what God said. He said the gifts are given to all severely as many as need them. They use them. You know what the best gift did you need? The gift that you need. You don't need prophecy when you need healing. You need the gift of healing. If, you get, if you're dying, you need to work in the miracles. Why not just go to God and say, God, I need that gift right now. Send it through somebody. I don't care if it's a janitor. Bring it to me, God. I need it. 
But see, if we don't believe God, then we make speculatory thoughts about information that's in our head that's usually half wrong, and then all of a sudden we have half truth. Next thing you know, we're deceived, and next time we're fearful, and next thing you know, what the devil brings on, nothing can stop it. Because he said, I told you to give no place to the devil. If it's a lie, you fry. If you give the truth, you'll grow and you'll mature and you'll be able to recognize God at work in your life. Proverbs 1, 7. Fear of the Lord of knowledge and that thing of knowledge. So if it's the beginning, if it's the priority, then what God's saying is, look, I know you all, all got problems. I know you've got a sin nature. I know you've failed. I know you've had a horrible past. But listen to me. Listen to me. I want to make you wise. I want you to understand I don't see you through you. I see you through me. I created you. The life I have for you, it's for right now. What you created has been dissolved and done away with. I don't care what you did right, wrong, indifferent. I care about you. Everybody say me. I care about you. You're my daughter. You're my son. I want these things to cause great blessings in your life. Wisdom will exalt you. But see, mental strongholds, they will try to bind you up with legalism. Legalism says, I have to. Look, I can't, if I don't go, go to church, I'm not going to be blessed. Well, I can't leave the church that I'm a part of. God's told me to, but I'd be scared. I was told if you leave, you'll die. I've told you'll miss God. That sounds like somebody had a Pepto-Bismol stuck inside their peanut butter sandwich. That's pretty nasty. You cannot allow fear in any package come at you. When I think about fear... I think of this great divine truth, the wisdom of Oz. Remember the Wizard of Oz? There's little old, that little old girl with the red slippers, and there's Toto, and there's the, the little thin man, skinny guy, and the, the, the tin man, and the, the lion. And they're all standing there, hoo, 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 and he's going, I am Oz, the great Oz. And they go, oh, 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 and the big old flames, and the picture up on the screen. And then a little old dog runs over and grabs the curtain and goes. And they look over and go. And here's an old crippled old man going, beep, beep, I am on, beep, beep. That's what a liar that gets up and says he has the control of God over God's people and puts them down, steps on them. That ain't God. He's the glory and the lift your head, not the puller down. Even if someone's wrong, let them go do it. Then they go out and do it. They'll have a place to come back to. Say, I missed it. I'm sorry. Praise God. God's always for you, not against you. You've got to always understand that. Failure is a part of success. You know why they call WD-40 WD-40? Water displacement. That's because they had 40 tests. They had 39 wrong ways to do it, and it didn't work. And on the 40th test, it worked. It displaced the water, so they call it WD-40. You will never have something the first time, the second time, the third time, but if you won't quit, you keep persevering toward it, God will make it happen in your life because he doesn't want you to fail. He wants you to win. The liberty. It says, I am free. See, legalism says, I got to do it a certain way. Freedom says, I'm already free. I just don't know how to walk in freedom. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I'm going to say liberty. Where the spirit of God is, listen to me, the spirit of God will always bring you freedom, never bondage. The spirit of God will always make you free, not bound up. Anytime something starts getting you legal, even if you sit down tonight and you say, I'm a brand new Christian, I'm a Holy Ghost filled believer, and now I'm going to make some rules in my life. I'm going to get up every morning at 9 o'clock and I'm going to pray for 10 or 15 minutes in the Spirit. Then I'm going to pray for 10 or 15 minutes in, the, in, in understanding. And then I'm going to sing for 5 or 10 minutes. And I'm going to concentrate this one hour every day to do these 5 or 6 duties in increments to get it done. 
And I guarantee you at the end of two or three years, you're going to be bound up and you'll be miserable because you put yourself under law. Oops, I didn't get up this morning. I forgot to pray. Oh, I forgot to sing. Oh, I put my tape deck didn't work. Oh, my God. Uh, and all of a sudden, you'll get stressed out and tormented because you're not keeping your own rules. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Whether you come to church or you don't. Whether you give money or you don't. You'll be responsible for the day you stand before God what you did with the liberties he gave you. Did you use them on yourself or did you lose them to bless others? That's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be willing. He wants us to be willing to say, God, your way is better than my way. Teach me, O oh Lord. Cause me to change. See, I get up and say, I've got to clean my house. I don't want to clean my house, but I want a clean house. I'm going to get up and clean my house. I don't want to clean my house, but I want a clean house. Can you see that? There's a decision. You get an agreement that I don't want to do the work to get it, but without the work to get it, I won't have it. So you create a desire to get up and get frustrated and pick up and itemize all the things that James put, didn't put in the right places so you can make sure I got all these things I didn't do. Oh, all right. But she got the house clean. And she was better for it because she liked the house clean. Amen? See, the importance of self-control is in 25, 28 Proverbs. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. We become like a city whose walls are torn down. Do you know, if you don't have any walls, though, God's going to give you godly walls. Listen to me. The walls that God gave you, they're to protect you. The walls that you put up are to enslave you. The devil says, oh, you need to put another wall up. Them old religious people trying to come around you. Put a wall up. Oh, you need to be careful over there. Them people want your money to help. Put your wall up. Put all these walls up, and pretty soon you are bound away from God. Wonder why God ain't touching you. Why you don't feel him? Because you created strongholds. You created walls. You created barriers that separate you from the will of God. And if you can't recognize it, then you're unwise. And pretty soon you'll be slipping farther and farther away. I have watched people have been this long enough. I've seen people have started with God strong. Boy, they were banging it for Jesus. Now they're back out in the bars drinking, using drugs, messed up on crack. What happened? They started letting strongholds get in their life. Barriers and walls because of offense, because of any other thing that comes against you, and you put those things up to protect yourself. You can't protect you. God's the only one that can protect you. When you let God, you trust in him with all your heart, you say, oh, God, what are we going to do in this mess? This is a biggie. Help, God. Then God will say, you're going to do this right here. Oh, okay, I didn't see that. He will show you. He will make the way for you to escape. Can I get an amen? See, a city without walls did not have any protection from the enemy. So God wants to protect you from the enemy, but he doesn't want you to protect yourself from him. He wants you to face him. I'm not, what are you doing here, devil? Get out of here right now in Jesus' name. The minute I recognize you, I have nothing to do with you. Get out of here. I used to know a woman that you go out to this big church I knew in Alvin, and this woman come up there and she'd blah, 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 all the time, her problem, 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 go up to the front of the church. She literally stayed up there and waste the whole service on the healing line. And they went to her over and over, counseled her, did everything in the world. Finally, they just had to say, listen, you come up here from now on, all we're going to do is speak in tongues. You're not going to wreck the service. I've come prepared with a message from God, and I'm going to give it to you. And I don't need you to sit here and give me something that you think is more important than me feeding the sheep. Now you go sit down. Folks, you've got to understand, sometimes people are a distraction. They do not want God, they want you. They want you to listen to them. They want you to follow them. They want you to give to them. They want to steal from you. And there's somewhere you've got to say, look, I'm not God. You need to go to God. I can't fix you. You need to go to God. That's your problem. People are trying to help people that to, if we turn loose and say, I cast you over on Jesus. You out here begging? God said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken other seed begging for bread. 
Don't sit there and be cowered down to somebody's seductive force to make you seem like you're ashamed or you're not a good person because you don't meet their need. I fell to that trap last week and I gave a guy some money and he told me, he told me all this junk I knew was baloney. But I was touched my weak spot and I bought him some candy. Okay. I bought his Coke. Here, let me just get your Coke too. Come to church. Here's my card. Never came. They never do. They never will. That's why I tell them, oh, Pastor, I need some gas in my car. Here's my card. I tell you what, Wednesday, come to church. I'll fill your car up. They come? No. You know why? They're a God to themselves. I am a God. I'm sent from God to correct you, to show you you don't have love. We're not tempted by the devil. Don't ever be frustrated when someone tries to put you under a demand to do what they say or you're not right with God. And that's what none of us as believers want to feel like we're mean, ugly, we don't help anybody. Everybody I know in the body of Christ would help anybody in a heartbeat. But we won't help a manipulator. A con artist is a con artist. And until their heart gets right with God, they're always going to be down that road of many sorrows. It's only when you let them. Sometimes you've got to love somebody enough you can turn them loose. You gotta say, I love, that's my kid, that's my family, that's my. But I can't fix them here, God. You take care of them. And then when they come to you, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. You gotta go to God. I'm not your God. I can't fix you anymore. I'm only causing you failure in your life because you keep thinking, I'm gonna bail you out. I am not Jehovah Jireh. You need to learn who God is, or I can't help you. If my children wanna go to hell, that's not my choice. It's not me stopping them from going to heaven. It's them making the choice themselves. They'll not get before God to my parents messed me up. Oh, really? So what stopped you after you got out from under your parents from living what's right? See, God will always go back to the source, and that's usually ourself. Can I get an amen? 1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Anytime someone's trying to manipulate your position to get their own acquisition, then you are not to be their provision. you got to recognize in the spirit, God is the supplier, we are not. We are ready to help anyone. But if I see the source of where it's coming from, God doesn't put his money in bags with holes in it. They're secure. You need finances. You need health. You need strength. You need courage. All that comes from obedience to God. Well, if you say that's good for you, amen, that's good for you, then it's good for them too. And if it's not, that's their problem, not yours. You can't make somebody else's sin yours. You cannot be responsible for somebody else. You have to understand, this is what God's made real to me, whether he's made it real to you or not. This is what's real. Well, Pastor so-and-so, well, somebody over here don't care. I don't care. I don't care who disagrees. When God makes something real to you, it is, it is what? Real. It's real to you. It don't matter if I disagree with you. If God makes something real to you, it's real to you. But you cannot be manipulated. See, when you understand the disciplines of God, there'll be stepping stones to God to this. Management, not deprivation. If you learn to manage your life, you will not be deprived from life. Management is a wonderful thing. You can start realizing when you learn how to manage your life, manage your finances, manage your family, manage your responsibilities, then you get what's called integrity. And therefore, you have confidence and courage because you've gone through trial and error. Now then, you have wisdom in your life. Can I get an amen? And you start letting your attitudes, your feelings, your actions, your angers, your eating, your spending time, your thoughts, your words, your entertainment. You start let the Spirit of God manage you. I was talking to somebody the other day. He said, did you watch the, 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 the voice? I said, yeah, I like it. I tape it, man. I go and watch it. But I said, you know what, last night... I was really grieved in my spirit for watching it. 
what? Why? I said, because I start looking at the people. This one guy that's a leader has got charges, sexual charges, or something filed against him, or drug charges, and, and they're all justifying him. And then over here, this other girl's dressing sleazy, and, and then this other one over here, and, and this other guy's singing some honk tonk song that was just so vulgar and funky. And yet I'm going, I'm sitting there in my chair going, man, I'm sitting in my flesh, it's getting down around. And all of a sudden, I had to hear the Lord say, are you really happy with that? Do you like that? No, God. What have I done? You're slipping over into the flesh. Don't think it leads you to blessing. It will corrupt you. Wow. Well, they didn't want to hear that. Well, I don't know. I don't to be so spiritual about everything. I said, you better be spiritual about everything. Life and death is in what you watch, see, taste, do. It is real when one day you go, your old ticker stops. You go, well, God, I wasn't ready to go. Yeah, you were. You were so full of hell, I had to get you out of there. You weren't witnessing for me anymore. You were living for the world. You were becoming an embarrassment to me. A lot of Christians go home early. God says, I love you. Come on, you're going home. Oh, God kills people? No. But he allows the wages of their sin, and allows their flesh that keeps dominating them to finally cause this due reward. Then he takes you home. See, God doesn't kill anybody. He receives everybody. He receives us when we die. Can I get an amen? Have you ever had the Holy Spirit mess with your plans? You done got something all wired out. This is what I'm going to do. It's going to be great. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost says, really? What about this? Why did you have to give me that? Darn. I love you. The devil's going to give you a choice to make. I'm going to give you one. It's your choice, whichever you want. I still love you. Whichever mistake you make, I'll pick you up and forgive you. But if you listen to me, you won't be repenting so much. You'll be able to walk in that walk that he has for you. Pro, uh, Proverbs 16, 9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. See, I could do what I wanted, but wisdom is always there to lead me to victory. Just remember, God loves you so much that he knows every thought. He knows everything about you, and he just wants you to consult him sometimes before you make a decision. Then when you consult him, you're definitely not going to like his answer, but you know his answer is always just. Then you obey his answer, and it, it crashes the plan that you had but it puts you into another level of understanding. And then you see the blessings. I remember a kid one time, he got mad at his dad because his dad told him to clean out the garage. And he didn't do it. So that night he wanted to use the car and go out. His dad said, nope, you're grounded. What? My friends, we don't want to go somewhere. I said, you're grounded. So get out of my face and go to your room. You're grounded. <laughs> said he got up the next morning. Went and opened the newspaper, and the buddies he was going out with robbed the store. They were in jail, all over the front page of the paper. Oh, he went and hugged his dad and cried to dad, thank you so much. You saved me. What do you mean? I would have been with them last night. That's who I was going out with. See, sometimes God knows best. And if we listen to him, even though it may seem detrimental to our plan, it will circumvent the adversary's ability to ruin your life. One little thought that I messed up and went and got high with some friends, and I got busted that night. One dead gum night. If I would have survived that weekend, I'd have gone to Vietnam in the Marine Corps. But I made one decision to go down to a surf shop with some other guys, and they said, we'll go get your lid and bring it back. And when we left and went to Houston party, and we came back, we had the lid in the car, but he was a, uh, an informant, and he told the cops, and they were ready for us. Pulling us over, throwing us in jail. They said, it's not mine, it's his. It's my car. They hid their stash in my car. They said, no, it's, not, it's his. We just hitchhiked it. He gave us a ride. That was a liar. 
Two of them are dead. I'm still alive. Don't ever think the ways of the unrighteous will always be a benefit. They won't be. It's a treacherous trap. I've ruined my family's name because I stepped out on my own. God told me over and over and over, don't do that, don't do that, get away from that, get away from that. It's a felony, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I heard it all the time. I said, but this is cool, though. It feels good. I want to be cool. Peace, man. But I wasn't cool when I was locked up in that jail. I couldn't get out. And I was sober. And there was a $2,500 bond on you. Class A narcotic charge could carry two to life sentences. Just a little 19-year-old idiot. But ruined my family. Ruined my, it was horrible what I went through. What they had to go through. Because of one choice. One little decision. If I would have not disobeyed the voice of God saying, don't do that, don't do that, get away from that, get away from that. God protect me from going to Vietnam and being killed. I was going as a grunt in the, in the Marine Corps. I'd have been dead. But God spared my life. I had to go to another death so I could realize I needed life without dying. That was to discover my ways were not his ways. And I needed to change because of the truth that was inside me. See Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He said, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, wherefore you cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Look, you don't have to have me tell you you're a child of God. The Spirit of God tells you you're a child of God. If we would learn to trust that inner voice and trust the Spirit of God, He has so much awesome things for you and I to discover in this world. But we have to learn how to hear Him and listen to Him and no other. See, God's plans are good. Romans 12, 2. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, not of the punishment and anger of God, but by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. That you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, we got to get in agreement with God. Have a fresh attitude toward discipline. See God as our friend, love him, and he'll exalt us. None of us start out with the whole apple cart. We don't have the whole enchilada. But if you understand, you wouldn't have started on the road if he didn't put you on it. Then you've got to understand Satan's already been a jump ahead, cramming your brain with all kinds of fears, doubts, worries, fret. But God said, fear not, for I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm walking with you. I'm talking to you. Just listen, and you'll hear me. And I will lead you away from darkness, and I will lead you into the light. Did y'all get that tonight? Did y'all get that tonight? Did I beat you up too hard? Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, I just come to you in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for Celebration House. I thank you for leaders in the kingdom that are here tonight. I thank you for men and women, God, who locked arms with Debbie and myself to reach out, Lord God, into this dark world and bring light. That men and women are going to know that there is a God because they know us. They know that we're not afraid of death and dying. We're not afraid of pain and suffering. We're not afraid of what the devil throws at people. We'll walk in the light and say, God, thank you. There's something inside this that you want to obtain and do through us. And God, I just welcome it. I say, God, the enemy comes in one way. He's got to flee in seven. Anything he brings to me, I have authority over it. And God, I thank you that each one in this room that have had baggage, things that have corrupted them, things that have hurt them, things that embarrassed them, things that they've been afraid of exposure on, I say tonight, they are broken. They have no authority. They cannot produce pictures anymore inside their mind. 
but God, they'll walk in that light and see the new development, the pictures that your spirit reveals in us. We are what you said we are. We love you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and we all said, praise God. Now you're going to go to sleep. I look so. <laughs> you look tired. I know I preach.